if I made some errors along the way in my early 20s I broke the law and I went to prison maybe many of you can relate to that I went to prison and the reason I went to prison is because I broke the law and then years later I didn't learn from that I broke the law again hello sir and I went to prison again I'm not glorifying this I'm just explaining to you where I was in my life and then I continued in that cycle why? because I had an addiction to gambling and I had to feed that addiction I don't know if anybody's walking by me today and you've got an addiction in your life whatever that might be and with an addiction all your focus is on meeting the need of that addiction and I did whatever I could to meet that need but unfortunately it led me down the road of breaking the law and I ended up in prison I nearly lost my family I nearly lost everything and then we went to marriage council even though we weren't married at the time and we got advice and it was well meaning advice but it's what we call worldly advice and unfortunately it didn't work and then me and my wife split up for a period of time it's the reason I'm sharing this with you because I know that people walking by here today are going through things you're going through issues you're going through marital issues or relationship issues or family issues but one thing for sure those issues will continue and continue and continue because they're inside of us and then one day or I should say one night I went to bed and I said a prayer to a God I didn't know existed and I said God if you're real come into my life because this life I'm living now this cycle of going to prison and coming out cycle of gambling God bless you this cycle of no change I can't live it anymore so I said a prayer that was a simple prayer and something happened that night because I woke up the next morning and I knew there was something different about me something small like I never I stopped swearing now I had a toilet mouth but I'd stopped swearing that night that morning and from there slowly but surely something happened to me which I know now was God now you might be thinking as you're listening to this what a load of codswallop because I used to think that way when I listened to people like this but I tell you what it's not codswallop God changed my life and what I started to realize then as I grew is that God not only changed my life but God died for me and how I learned that was by revelation one night I was in my prison cell lay on a book bed angry with God angry with life even though it was all down to me and God revealed his son Jesus Christ to me you see you don't need to go to church to know Jesus Christ and you don't need to go to prison to get to that point to know Jesus Christ but you do need to come to the end of yourself and realize that you can sort out your life only God can do that people it's called reckoning yourself dead the Bible says that's not in a physical death that's in a spiritual death every one of you were walking by me now 
You're made up of three things. You're made up of a spirit. Yes, you are. A spirit. You have a spirit. You have a soul and you have a body. But the majority of people here today are walking around by their soul and their body. And the spirit, the Bible says, is not alive to God. It's not alive to God. It's not alive to your creator. It's not alive to the God that created you and me. It's not alive. So the question is, how do I make that alive? How do I make my spirit alive? It's by declaring that you can't... God bless you, bro. You can't. You can't make that spirit alive. Oh, you okay, sweetheart? Oh, dear. You can't make that spirit alive yourself. Okay. You cannot. You know, in the Bible, it talks about Jesus Christ. You all right? The Bible says that He is the way into heaven. He is the truth and He is the life. What that means is this to everybody here today, I want to declare this one thing to you. There's no way through to heaven except through Jesus Christ, the Bible says. So you may have an idea of this heaven and that one day when you die, you'll go there. Yes, you will go there. It will either be to be spending eternity with God or separating from Him. And I know that's a harsh message, but I learned that in my life. But I also learned that there's a love of God. And there's a love of God where God loves you so much. Even though you ignore Him, He still loves you. Even though you don't acknowledge Him, He still loves you. Even though you don't glorify Him, He still loves you. The Bible says in John 3.16, a Bible verse that you've probably heard many times, God so much loves you and me, the world. God loves you so much that He sent His one and only Son, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, His one and only Son. And if you believe on Him, who? Jesus. If you believe on Him, you will never ever perish. You'll never die. And you'll have everlasting life. So one thing I want to share with you more than anything. Jesus Christ died for you today. And how you receive Jesus is by faith. You receive Jesus by faith. Let me tell you, if you need to be healed today, you can be healed in an instant. The Bible says that, there's a verse that says, every good and perfect gift is from God. Good gifts are doctors and nurses and medicine. They're good gifts. And they're great to be able to go to a doctor and assess you. That's a good gift from God. But there's also a perfect gift from God. And that perfect gift is when He can heal you in an instant. I've seen it. By faith, we receive it. These guys here today, I'll come out today to share things with you. If you need prayer, it takes faith. Come on up and speak to one of us up here. We are willing to pray with you. We want them to stand here right now and pray with you for supernatural healing. But it takes faith to come on up. Maybe you don't know God and you want to know God. Maybe you've come to the end of your life. Maybe you don't know the questions about who God is. Who is Jesus? How do I get to this place? Many people ask Jesus that in his day. Hey Jesus, how do we get to this kingdom of God that you're preaching about? And Jesus said, you must be born again to enter the kingdom of God. What does that mean? It means that you have to come before God, repent of your sin, repent of your life, repent of what you're doing wrong. Repent means to turn away. It means if you're going down the wrong way, turn around and come the right way. 
Turn back towards God. That's what it means. If you repent, you turn back towards God, and you ask God to forgive you of your sin, God can heal you instantly of your sin. You know, sin means you need healing. Not just physical healing. We need spiritual healing. And you can be born again in an instant. You don't have to go to church to be born again. You don't have to get on your knees to be born again. You can be born again in an instant. It's an act of faith. It's an act of faith. All these young beautiful people here today. Yeah. God bless you girls. You can be born again. In an instant. And you know I'll just finish on this. You know, in Manchester, we have a real big homeless problem. That's the society we live in today. It's been so big now compared to years ago. There's homelessness everywhere. And you know the society we live in today, I've been standing in Manchester preaching, and I've seen people stepping over people. And God showed me something one day. I was stood on a street corner and I was watching. And over two, three thousand people walked, and not one person stopped to see if this person was okay and lay down on the floor. That's the society we live in today because it's depraved. The society we live in today is it doesn't want to know God. God is not in schools, God is not in universities and colleges, God is not in our government. No God. Take that away. I don't want to listen about God. Let me tell you something. God is in control. And God will bring an end to this world one day. And one day, you're going to go before God. One day, every one of us are going to stand before the living God. The God that created the world and the God that created you and me. And we're going to stand before Him. One day. Right now, you're probably quite young. And that's not affecting you because years and years are before you're going to die. But the Bible says you're not promised tomorrow. The Bible says nobody, Jesus said, nobody's promised tomorrow. So I'd encourage you today, ponder on the thoughts that what these guys have spoken to you again today about. Ponder on it. Just ponder on God. Think about God. If you've got a Bible, read it. If you haven't, get one. Read the Bible. Read about Jesus Christ. Read why he had to come into this world. Read why he had to die at 33 and a half years old. Very young age. Read why he said, I chose to die. Nobody took my life. I laid it down. I know that you've heard, read the stories that the Romans killed him or the Jews killed him. But Jesus said, no. They didn't kill me. I chose to go onto the cross and die. Why would anybody choose to die? Because he goes on to say, he died for you and me. The Bible says there's no forgiveness of sin, no remission of sin without the shedding of blood. Jesus Christ died on a cross and his blood forgives your sin and my sin and my wrongs. There is forgiveness available to each and every one of you today. So I want to encourage you, if you're going through something today, if you've got bad thoughts in your mind today, maybe you're thinking bad thoughts, maybe you're feeling at the end of your pitiful rope, maybe you're feeling life isn't worth living anymore. Well, life is worth living. But Jesus said, I've come to give you life. Jesus said, I've come to give you life, a more abundant life. The life you're living right now, if you don't have Jesus, is not an abundant life. You might have money, money is not life. You might have a nice house, that's not an abundant life. Abundant life is coming to know that one day, when you leave this world, you're going to spend the rest of your life in heaven with the God that created you. 
So I would encourage you 